Hi there, I'm Angela Fair. Do you know how many times I get emails from artists who are struggling with wanting to give up on watercolor? They're feeling blocked, they don't know what to paint, they don't know if they're any good at painting. Um, you know, it's just a struggle all the way around. And there's a reason why there's so much that's been written about creative blocks and artistic blocks. And I think a creative block comes from two places. Uh, Actually, I think it comes from one place, actually. Uh, it comes from fear. Uh, when you fear that you don't have what it takes to be a good artist, um, that you're never going to get to where you want to be, uh, that can hold you back and block you more than anything else. It's a source of guilt. It causes you to procrastinate. It just hurts you as an artist. And we don't want to feel guilty. So as... Um, as we, I'm going to do a little painting for you and I'm going to talk about the very quickest and easiest way to cure that creative block. And uh, as we paint live, I'm also going to tell you uh, a little bit about my watercolor beginner boot camp, which is a free event that starts tomorrow. So uh, let's just switch over to my work service and uh, I'll take, I'll, I'll take, give you a little tour of what we're going to be working on today. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so um, on my work surface are two uh, paintings. These two right here uh, are actually going to be part of my watercolor beginner boot camp and uh, little landscapes that we're going to be painting as a class. And in the class, I'm going to be showing you um, this first layer is going to become a complete painting uh, by tomorrow. And I'm going to be showing you some of the common mistakes artists make. And this uh, painting shows a few of them. Often when we're painting uh, as a beginning painter, we tend to work in a jigsaw puzzle fashion where we will uh, paint each piece separately. We paint the sky, we paint the water, we paint the mountain, we paint the grass. We try to let each piece dry so that we don't have a lot of bleeding and overlap so it doesn't look like this. And, uh, but in that process, we actually struggle because um, as you can see here where I painted some of these yellow flowers, we have an overlap between the yellow and the blue um, and that you see the line showing through and then we have to struggle to fix that. We have areas where we weren't exact in matching our, our shapes and so we have little white gaps showing through. This is an extreme example but even along here we have um, those little white gaps uh, showing and they're they're hurting our painting. They're causing, uh, they're creating an edge that actually is um, very distracting to the overall flow of the painting. Uh, in my Facebook group today, uh, I painted this version of the same scene, and I'm fairly happy with it. Um, for this one, I painted uh, basically uh, in a similar to the jigsaw puzzle fashion, but I tried to do it all in one layer, and that really helped me to blend some areas, although it has a few mistakes as well. And I, I don't think it's bad to have a mistake in your painting. Um, but then when I've been painting from a reference photo, often what I find is that I really rely on my reference photo and I end up painting something that is very much a copy of what I see without being able to differentiate between what's least and most important. And that can be a problem if you want to be a heart-led artist, if you want to share your emotion that's connected with the scene. Um, and even if, even just because we're working with the limitations of the photo, a uh, reference photo will always give the most detail to the objects that are closest to the viewer which generally is the, down at the bottom of the page. And so often, uh, if you're painting from a reference photo, we tend to paint very detail-heavy paintings down at the bottom of the page. And that can mean, make our painting very heavy down here. And it can make it very hard for the viewer to go right through your painting to, to follow each, uh, to just have a pathway of travel through the scene. So we have to balance our scene. We have to make artistic decisions. And that can feel overwhelming if you're just getting started in watercolor. If you've been struggling with getting your paintings to do what you want them to do, when you have a blank piece of paper, the, it can feel a little overwhelming. You don't want to spoil that piece of paper. You ruin yet another sheet of paper. And I want you to lay your fears aside right now. If you are painting, you are growing. The very best way that you can grow your skills and become the artist you want to be is by logging a lot of brush miles. The more you paint, the more you develop strategies so that you can make choices uh, that are independent of your reference photo, choices that serve your painting. And uh, you can stay encouraged because <laughs> this paper right now is not fulfilling its purpose. 
Paper's purpose is to be filled. No piece of paper ever succeeded by staying blank. If you think of an exception to that, let me know. But really, we want to see something on the paper. You would be very disappointed if you bought a, a novel and you opened it up and every page was blank. We want our story to happen and we need paper in order to do that. And uh, we're, we're artists. We have to develop our skills somehow. And that involves putting paint on this paper. So please don't hoard your paper. Use it. And if you're feeling stressed about messing it up, recognize as well that until your brush touches the paper, there's, there's no learning happening. There's no growth happening. So we have our piece of paper. We have to make a choice now to put those brush strokes down on the paper. And to do so in a mindset that doesn't feel bad if the painting doesn't turn out, because that's the second thing that tends to happen, right? Um, we are afraid to start our painting. We're afraid to mess it up. So drop your brush, make a dirty mark on the paper. Look, actually, that's a really pretty dirty mark. Isn't, isn't it frustrating when the brush makes a prettier mark than you might make on your own? That can feel overwhelming. Um, actually, that looks like, oh, let me show you. Um, so we get this beautiful mark and then we panic because, you know, it wasn't what we planned. Uh, but look at this. I can take that lovely gray blue and that ugly mark. Let's do some more of them. There we go. And you just needed to echo that over there. And now we have this beautiful shape. Uh, I lost my colors somewhere along the way. Now we have a sky and and we have a mountain. Look at that. Now I was supposed to paint an Irish landscape on this, but when I saw that mountain, I just had to do it. And that is actually the key to succeeding um, in watercolor and as a, as a loose artist and to have um, the ability to stay encouraged as you paint is if you are attuned to what is happening on the paper, you will be able to paint uh, and stay and, and just enjoy painting so much more. To grow as an artist because painting has become fun. Because suddenly you started a dialogue with the, with the paint and the water and, um, and you started to see things and encourage them to emerge. The paint, like it really does create a more beautiful painting if I let the paint do its thing. Rather than trying to make my hand the master of the scene, if I can let the watercolor out and do its own thing, suddenly, I mean, look how pretty that is. We don't even have to know what it is to enjoy how beautiful it is. So that's a place to start. Start with your start with your plan. Yes. Say I'm going to go out to the studio. I have a painting I've been working on. Okay, go out to the studio. I know is an overstatement for most of you. I'm going to get my painting stuff out. Um, I'm going to go into that spare room, or I'm going to clear off the dining room table and do some painting. And I'm going to just put that first brushstroke on the paper and see what happens. And when we do that, we start to see new possibilities. We start to talk to the painting, uh, to the paper. Um, let the paper talk to you and we are painting i think there's this um, overemphasis on the paint in watercolor we load up our brushes with paint but it's actually the water that does most of the work it's the fluidity of the water it's the movement between uh, of water moving pigments together that creates beautiful watercolor and so if you are thinking about the water a little bit more than the paint so much um, that will help you to understand watercolor a little bit better as well now tomorrow I'm going to be teaching this is a little bit advanced um, what I'm doing here being able to uh, to listen to the paint and react to it gets easier the more you paint as you start to play 
you will start to see those possibilities emerge and open up and you will start to get a feeling for um, the colors you want to use and the thing that feels like the next right step for your painting. I have, this is wisteria, I'm just going to spatter it on, it just felt like the right thing to do. And when you start, it, and it over, it overcompensated up here, so we're going to spread that out a little bit. But if you're just getting started on watercolor, I don't think there's a re there's, I don't think it has to be rigid and unforgiving and academic. I think that you, I, I know that you can learn to paint um, in this joyful, intuitive manner. And that's been a priority for me as I've taught watercolor um, over the last few years. So we're gonna spend time talking about that in that online workshop tomorrow. It is free to sign up and I would love to have you join me. It, there's a link in the description below the video. And uh, if you can't make the live broadcast, because I know time zones, it doesn't work for everybody, I am sending out uh, the link to the replay so you can watch the recording afterwards. So you, you're not gonna miss out just because you, know, you have a, a job and a life and all of that. Um, I, I really, my, my goal, my mission is for my students and for anyone who loves watercolor to feel encouraged in the journey, in that learning process. If you love watercolor too much to quit, you will master this medium. Uh, you just have to be too stubborn to give up. And, um, and learn how, learning how to stay encouraged in the process and make this kind of um, heart-guided play uh, a part of that is really, really, really valuable. Uh, it is really a key to helping you grow. I believe that when you are playing, you are most authentically yourself. You're going to be most in tune with the pigment and then you're going to let go of some of that guilt and fear so that you can just be in that moment. Um, just like a little kid playing, they're not looking at the clock. They're not worried about um, you know, whether or not they're going to wear out their toys by playing with them too much. They're just there to have as much fun as possible. And that's really what my goal is as a, as a professional artist. That's what has made my paintings come alive over the years. And I tried to be a loose water, a loose painter, or uh, rather I tried to be a photorealistic painter uh, before I ever um, thought about being uh, loose and heart guided in my approach. And when I started painting uh, from the heart without drawing first, just letting the painting kind of guide me through. That was when I found out who I really was and had uh, just absolutely so much fun. And it's been my privilege to share that with over 10,000 students over the last um, six or seven years. Um, so this has been really fun. It's not finished. Uh, painting like this, you can see there's a need for some detail probably and I'm trying to decide how much of that I can do in the first layer. Um, having painted for so many years, it does make it a little bit easier to um, see and anticipate um, what, what I can get away with at this stage of the painting. Um, this is Sodalite Genuine. It's a really nice dark um, blue-black. And it gets lighter as it starts to dry, so I can place some of that dark color here and then let it flow a little bit. And little blue um, highlights will emerge as that uh, soda light starts to spread out and dry. It's really pretty. And it helps that I know my colors so well. I've been using these same colors, uh, a lot of them for many years, and that makes it easier too. The more you play with different colors, the more you see what they can do. And that gets locked away in your toolbox um, for the next painting to help you become um, just better and stronger at that painting decision making. So that pop of dark now brings the eye. It's, it really contours that mountain just a little bit more. I kind of think um, a bit of a pop of dark cloud would be beneficial at this stage too. Let's try it. Maybe should have been a little bit grayer. Um, I'm using the same blue that I was using down here, just a little bit diluted but adding a little bit of orange to it will just brown it up a little bit and make it a little bit less blue a little closer to a true gray oh yeah that's nice OK, 
Okay, so I'm just kind of looking and evaluating. I'm not rushing, and that's another thing that is important to know is, is with this kind of painting, um, things do dry quickly, so there's this feeling that you need to rush, but no, no masterpiece ever happened in a great big hurry. So instead of rushing, what I like to say is um, don't paint fast until you've thought through what you want to do next. If you can see the next step in your head, then do it. Um, but until you can see it, you know, just hold back, um, pause, pay attention, and evaluate. And as you do that, then the next step will reveal itself when you're in that place of being able to pause and look. Now, I really love this spatter right here. Let's see if we can't place a little bit more. It's wet down here, so it's probably going to bleed and not be as crisp, but I'm going to try it anyhow because I'm impatient. And I've made my peace with that. I've made impatience a part of my painting process, and that's just... Um, why I try to do as much in the first layer as possible. But it's okay because when you paint a lot of the scene in that first layer and you do very little towards the end, what ends up happening is um, you get a fresher look. The more layers you add, the more your painting is going to look labored over. And we, and, you know, if I'm going for a loose effect, I don't want that. Now we have a uh, Pam comments, I get in trouble when I think, and that is so true. Um, overthinking um, there's there's head there's paintings that we paint with our head and there's paintings that we paint with our heart and the ones that we paint with our heart have more life to them more emotion um, as we're painting we're always thinking um, you know and it's it's interesting what happens when you get to a place where you can paint from instinct and a lot of that is just being patient through the learning process and uh, knowing that you can't do it all at once. We do small parts at a time. Uh, you know, we learn in small pieces. And I'm gonna be sharing some of those small pieces in my live workshop tomorrow. Uh, do sign up in the link in the description below the video. This is my watercolor boot camp. Uh, I love the phrase boot camp paired with watercolor because it's so not what we're about. Um, but it really is a crash course in the fundamentals of watercolor. So I'm gonna be talking about the basics trying to help you think like a watercolor artist in just a few hours and then from there you can start to practice and grow your skills so that you can develop that instinctive uh, ability to kind of anticipate what the painting needs and start to see just one step ahead and i encourage you to sign up and join me i'm angela fair and thank you for watching